Okay. Sige, chapter 2 is about descriptive statistics. Remember when I discussed chapter 1, um, we have classified statistics into two, descriptive and inferential. So the descriptive statistics only summarize, uh, summarizes or um, describe the data you have gathered. Um, most likely, magsa-summarize lang talaga siya. So you will not have inferences or generalization about your sample or even your population. So for today, our objective, first explain the principle of descriptive statistics and then apply the knowledge as to the selection of the basic features of the data in descriptive statistics and apply knowledge as to make summary about sample and the measures. So let's start first with the first statistical tool under the descriptive statistics. Again, your principle me descriptive statistics is just to either summarize the data after you have gathered them, is a summarize mo siya, and you can also describe the data. But this time for the first statistical tool, frequency distribution, this is more on summarizing. Now, how do we do that? We are going to tabulate the gathered data. So itatabulate natin ang data ng ating sample uh, in different <coughs> categories and in different levels of measurement. So itatabulate natin sila pero igugroup natin sila together. So ano yung magiging mukha ng uh, frequency distribution? Mas madali kasi siyang maintindihan pag meron tayong example. So for example, construct a frequency distribution table for the following sets of scores. Again, yung instruction, we have to construct a frequency distribution table for the following sets of scores. So sa frequency distribution, wait na ba? Ayan. Okay, okay na. Ayan, so sa frequency distribution, ganito lang siya. You just have to make a table. So this one is... Nakita mo. Wait lang ha, wala na gaga, nagtarong ako ang... And wala na mo siya. clear first. So sa frequency distribution, again, you just have to tabulate, example, the scores here, and then we have here the frequency. Okay? So di lang ako na siya ma-straight, ha? Okay. Ayan. So yung scores, these are sets of scores kasi. So, i, ang gagawin natin is just to arrange them pwedeng in an increasing manner or decreasing manner. So, ano ba yung mga scores na nandito? You have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, starting sa, sa 4 yung scores dito. Ilalagay lang natin siya here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Then, so, yan yung mga existing scores natin na nakuha sa data. And then, ang gagawin class for the frequency, ikakount lang natin kung ilan yung scores na yan sa data. So, for example, sa 4, ikakount mo lang ilan lahat yung 4. Like this one, 1, 2, ay, meron pala tayong 3. I forgot the 3. I need to, sorry. Start pala tayo sa 3 class. Litin ko ha. Position of pansin kanina. May 3 pala dito. So start tayo again sa 3. Okay. So starting from 3, we only have 1. So the frequency is 1. And that is just how you are going to do the frequency distribution table. And then for the 4, we have 1... 2, 3, and 4. So we also have 4. Um, 
4 na frequency for the score na 4. And then for 5, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 lang, masig na libat ko. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is also 4 here. That's the frequency. And then for 6, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Tama ba? Kindly check ha, basig na ako'y wala na sali. Okay. And then um, for 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. <laughs> okay, 6. So this is 6. And then for 8, 1, 2, 3, or makalibat magbuhat og frequency distribution. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this is 4. And then for 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5. And lastly, ilan lahat? Ilan, 10. Isa lang, no? So this is 1. So this is now your frequency distribution table. So you may actually place sa baba. Pwede ka maglagay here sa baba ng total. So ito total mo lang ito lahat. Uh, 5, 10, 19, 25, 35. So this one is a total of 35. And then let's recheck kung 35 ba talaga ito lahat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, ay, 21, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 15, 9, 30 lang dahil. Ano man to? Wait lang. Pataka lang kung add. 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 30 lang dahil. Ay, ano man na ang 35. Okay. So tama. 30. So, the total of 30 scores. And we have tabulated it using a frequency distribution table. So, yun yung paggawa class ha ng frequency distribution table. Meaning, magsasummarize lang tayo. So, kailan natin gamitin? Sa research, um, parate natin ginagamit si frequency distribution table. Especially, if we have a question about <coughs> the demographic profile of the respondents. I don't know if you have this in your senior high school or your junior high school sa research ninyo. Like, nagkandak kayo ng survey and like your question number one is what is the demographic profile of the respondents in terms of number one, sex, number two, age, ganyan, or number three, civil status. So, pag Maglalagay ka na ngayon ng result ng study mo sa results section sa chapter 4, magtatabulate ka na lang. That is actually a frequency distribution table. Like gagawa ka ng table, um, example here sa sex and then frequency here. Actually, pwede mo siyang dagdagan ng percentage dito sa, sa kabila. So pag lagay mo dyan, you have male and then female. So yan naman, instead of scores, yung sex na ang ilagay mo. And ilalagay na natin, ilan sa respondents natin ang male. So for example, meron kang 50 and meron ka ding 50 na male. This is still class a frequency distribution table. So meron, pwede mo din siya lagyan ng total here that is 100. Now kung hiningi ng panel yung percentage, so lagay mo lang yung percentage. So actually, since hati naman sila, this is 50%, 50%. So a total of 100%. That's how you do a frequency distribution table. Any question? Alin dito yung hindi naintindihan for the frequency distribution table? Mahirap pa. Nakalibat lang ni siya class kasi you really have to count everything. Like for the example, if scores and maraming scores talaga, 
and then i-count mo sila isa-isa, you really have to have patience here. Okay lang sana kung sex lang kasi dalawa lang. Count mo lang yung male and female. Pero kung scores na yung ibang ibang area na ang pag-uusapan, medyo mahirap. I mean, masyadong matrabaho. Um, itong next slide, this is using a software, pero this is a SPSS and we don't have SPSS now since may bayad nga siya. So let's try to use the JASP software. I hope nag-download na kayo. You can open your, ano, your JASP software kung na-download nyo na and let's try to use it. Wait lang ha, kasi matagal yan siya mag-open. Open ko lang siya. Open ko lang yung akin para mapakita ko sa inyo uh, how are we going to do the frequency distribution table using the JASP software. Let's let's just wait. Okay, murag dugay-dugay, dito siya ma-open. While waiting, you can also open yours. Na sa inyo hang gadget para masundan nyo. And let's make our lives easier. Um, sa quizzes and sa exam ko, you can do the manual computation. If I will be asking you to make a frequency distribution, distribution, you can do it manually. And then you just have to send your answer sa akin. But if you may, if you opt to use your software, you can also do that. Pero you have to take a video on uh, while you are navigating the software and you need to send it sa akin na file. Okay, so you have you have two options. Again, your options will be either you do it manually and just take a picture of your answer, send it sa akin, or you can use the software but you have to take a video while you are um, navigating and using the software. And then send this sa akin yung video. <coughs> it's up to you na. So this one class is the JASP software. I'll be teaching you how to use this. But ganito, hindi mo kasi siya magagamit pag wala kang file. Uh, so ang gagawin muna natin, open muna tayo ng Excel. Open muna tayo ng Excel. Magbigay na open sa Excel. Let me just let me just take a picture of the scores first. <coughs> Sorry. Tell me if hindi nasundan ha. I hope nag-open ka dyan ng software ninyo. Open muna kayo ng Excel class. Before we can use the just software, Excel muna. And then, um, ilagay nyo dito yung scores. Tabulate muna tayo sa Excel. And then, I took a picture of the scores a while ago. Then, ilagay ko muna siya dito sa Excel ha. 6, that's a name, 989, 8, 9, 8, 6, 8, 4, 9, 5, and then, tapos, 7, 9, tell me if may namiss ako habang signalibat ko. 4, 7, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3, 9, 7, 5. 7, 6. And then four seven four. Okay. Tapos after you encode yung score sa Excel, you have to save it, save as, kasi hindi na babasa ni Just Software yung naka Excel lang talaga siya na format. 
So, ang nababasa niya, wait lang, let me browse first. Doon ko na lang talaga siya ilagay sa statistics ko na folder. Okay. Okay. And take note, save as type. Hindi niya yan nababasa. I mean, ang just software, hindi niya nababasa yung Excel workbook. So, ang nababasa niya lang ay yung CSV. So, I hope nasundan ha kasi baka mag-try kayo navigate ng just software and dito pa lang sa first part, nakalimutan nyo na na it has to be in CSV format. Itong comma delimited. Okay? Yan yung nababasa class. Me, just. Okay? So, i-save mo na natin siya. Ayan. So, after nyo siya ma-save, <coughs> pwede na natin gamitin si just. So, balik tayo doon sa just natin. Okay. Ayan. So, this is how it looks like. Yung just. Tell me if hindi nasundan ha kung masyado akong mabilis. And then, kung nakita niyo itong tatlong parang line here, click niyo yan, and then open, and then hanapin niyo yung file niyo. So, para sa akin, uh, di ba si Maeve ko yun siya sa pharmaceutical statistics, and then here it is, frequency distribution table. So, yun lang yung nakikita niya. Kung tingnan niyo, Maraming na, marami actually file na nandoon sa pharmaceutical statistics ko na folder. Pero again, yung nababasa lang ni Just is the etong kama, ICSB. Okay? Microsoft Excel kama separated values file. CSV format yan siya. So, i-open nyo lang siya. And then, i-import niya. So, this one, ito na yung um, sinave natin doon sa Excel na score. Si import niya siya sa JASP. And then since we are going to make a frequency distribution table, we'll just click the descriptives. Ayan. And then, kailangan natin yung frequency table. So this one, i-click natin siya. And then i-drag mo itong scores dito sa variable. So, bibigyan ka na niya ngayon ng frequency distribution table. So, disregard muna natin yung valid percent and cumulative percent though. Um, dito lang muna tayo. So, ayan. Ito lang. So, ito na yung frequency distribution table according kay Just Software. So, it will make our lives easier. Hindi na tayo magpa-manual na Uh, magbilang kung ilan yung number 4, ilan yung number 5, and so on. So, automatic niyang ibibigay yun. So, you have there the scores. For example, for 3, meron kang 1. Kindly <coughs> check that 1 sa minanual natin kanina na ginawa. So, hindi ka na din mag-compute ng isa-isa na percentage. So how do you how do you compute for the percentage? If you're going to do that manually, syempre i-divide mo lang yan siya, yung frequency divided by the total number. So 1 divided by 30 times 100. Yan yung percentage na makukuha mo. So 1 divided by 30 times 100, ayan, 3.33%. Wala sa yung frequency table. Ano nakalagay, Leslie? Ito yung frequency table ha. Uh, Di ba? I-click ako sa descriptives. So, i-click mo itong frequency table or nominal or ordinal values. Wala? Sige. Ay, okay na? Nakita mo na? Ayan. So, actually... Um, our next lesson will be about mean, median, and mode, and uh, standard deviations also. Pero kung gagamitin pa rin natin yung the same values, and itong software, actually automatic ibibigay niya din yan. 
So like this one, nagbigay na siya kaagad ng mean and then the standard deviation. So automatic lahat class kung sa um, just software yung gagamitin natin. Okay? So kung kailangan pa natin yung iba, like this one, uh, just click the statistics. Wait lang, hamalik natin. So di ba ganito siya kanina? You can click the statistics and you can click the median. Idadagdag niya dyan yung median. And then you click also the mode. Idadagdag niya din yung mode. So hindi ka na mamroblema. You can also click the range if you need the range and also the variance. So isang isahan na lang yan siya. <coughs> Ibibigay yan lahat ni just hindi ka na magma manual computation but then again those na uh, hindi makaka-access kay just magma manual computation tayo later okay nasundan yon any question by the way pwede mong i-copy yang table na yan just click this one and then copy and then i-paste mo na siya doon sa like microsoft word Para hindi ka na mag-edit-edit, hindi ka na magawa ng sarili mong table. I-copy mo na lang siya diretso and then that's it. You are done. So ito yung ginagamit ko ngayon na software for statistics. Because again, this one is free. So wala tayong intellectual property na matatamaan. Uh, unlike the SPSS na meron kasi siyang license and it's very expensive. Very, very expensive. So, ito muna. Anyway, this one is user-friendly naman. Hindi naman siya ganun ka mahirap i-navigate. Actually, mas mahirap pa i-navigate si SPSS kesa kay Just. Any question? Any clarification about the frequency distribution table? Aling part doon ang hindi naintindihan? Ulito na to. Manual. Manual na frequency distribution table. Any question? Or yung pag-navigate sa an, ano tawag dyan? Just software. Wale? Sure na? <laughs> Sige. Huh. Ayan, let's go back to our our point presentation. Wala tayong questions sa frequency distribution table. Uh, this one is for the SPSS, so let's disregard this first. Yes, medyo mahirap, ma ma medyo mas mahirap si frequency distrib distribution table sa SPSS. <coughs> okay. Let's move on. Let's talk about the measures of cent central tendency. So, sa, sa, ano, sa statistics class, we actually use or we actually determine or identify a single score that will define the center of the data, the center of distribution. So, for example, you have 100 data. Nag-survey ka sa 100 na tao. <coughs> Most of the time, we tend to identify yung center niyan ng gitna ng, ng ating distribution. Sa 100 na yan, ano yung center? That's the central tendency. Yun mostly ang ginagawa natin for statistics. And we have indicators of central tendency. We have the mean, median, and the mode. We will be discussing kailan natin sila dapat gamitin. Yung una, we have the mean. This is actually the most common and the most what the most widely used measure of central tendency. Other name for our mean is arithmetic mean or we can call it average. Arithmetic average. Now, how do we compute the mean? I believe you are very familiar with this. You just have to add everything. You have to add all the values and divide it with the number of observation. So ito yung ating 
formula sa pag-compute ng mean. We have actually two means, population mean and the sample mean. Population mean if <coughs> nag-survey ka sa lahat ng members of the population. So, example, residents of General Santos City. Meron tayo dito, example, 1 million. Example lang yan, hindi ko alam kung gano'n tayo karami sa Gensa nowadays. Um, as in, lahat talaga 1 million. So, meron kang 1 million na data. So, pag pinakuha sa iyo ang mean, you will be using this, the population mean. Actually, the same lang naman yung um, formula nila. It's just that population mean, eh, ang symbol niya is this one, the mu. And then, uh, same pa rin naman yung way ng pag-compute. You have to add all the scores, but you have to divide it sa population size. So kung 1 million yan, lagay mo dyan, 1 million. That's the population mean. But if ever you do the sampling, <coughs> so you don't include all the members of the population, nag-sample ka lang, So you use this formula. The sample means symbol is capital letter M. And then uh, after adding the scores, divide mo siya kung ilan yung sample size mo. So let's have an example here. Compute for the mean of the potency of 10 batches of vaccine. So uso ito ngayon kasi nag, uh, meron tayong drive for vaccination. So example, the researcher wants to know the potency of these vaccines. So meron siyang sampung batches, chinect niya yung potency and ito yung nakuha niya na mga scores for the potency again. Now, um, the instruction is you have to get the central tendency, the measure of central tendency in terms of mean. So since this one is just a sample, So, sample mean yung uh, kukunin natin. Pero before ko siya sasagutan, kayo muna. Because I believe you are very familiar on how to get the mean. Sige, you may try to answer that in your in any, any extra sheet of paper there. And you may send your answer sa chat. I'll be waiting for that before tayo mag-manual computation sa screen. Okay, question mark. Dili sigurado. Question Mailing is a question. <laughs> okay. Sige. So how are we going to do uh, to get the mean? Again, our formula is M is equal to summation of X. Summation of X means you have to add all scores and divide it sa number of sample size. So you have to add all scores class, meaning lahat talaga yan ha like 
plus 97.9 plus 102.3 plus 95.6 plus 93.6 plus 95.9 plus 101.8 plus 99.5 plus 94.9, and lastly, 103.4. Tell me if may namiss ako. And then, ilan sila lahat? Sampo. So, divide it sa 10. So, our mean here is, wait lang, 106.6, 97 97.9, 102.3, 95.6, 93.6, 95.9, and 103.4 divided by 10. So this is 99.15. So this is our mean. So yes, tama naman yung answer ninyo, 99.15. Okay? So yung hindi 99.15 ang answer, kindly check. I-recheck ninyo, baka may na-miss kayo dyan na number, may hindi kayo nasali. Or baka may napalitan kayo na number dyan. So again, kindly recheck yung hindi 99.15 yung answer. I-recheck niyo siya. Recheck niyo muna ha. Okay. Yeah, salin nyo. Uh, most likely two decimal places. Okay, any questions sa pagkuha ng mean? Mahirap ba? I think hindi naman mahirap, no? Okay, um, if you want to do this sa just software, ganun pa rin yung gagawin natin, ha? You have to uh, encode this first sa Microsoft Excel, but you have to save it as CSV. And then, ganun pa rin. Uh, wait lang. Dito pa rin kayo class sa after saving it, dito pa rin kayo ha. I-open nyo muna yung file, recent file. And then hanapin nyo saan nyo si Nave yun. Pag na-import na, na siya sa uh, JASP, ito yung i-click nyo ha, descriptives. So lalabas yan siya. And then, kung gusto niyo frequency table, i-click niyo lang yung frequency table. Pero, automatic kasi pag uh, i-click niyo yung descriptives and then nalagay niyo na yung scores dito sa variables, automatic ibibigay niya na yung mean. Okay? Pero hindi ito yung bagong example natin ha. This one is for the previous one when we did the frequency distribution table. I was not able to encode the current scores sa Excel kasi. Any question? <coughs> For the mean? Wala. So let's move on. Let's talk about the median. Okay. Let's talk about the median. So this is another measure of central tendency. From the name itself, median, it's really the midpoint of the distribution. Nasa gitna siya. Meaning, uh, you will have equal amount or equal size sa taas and sa below niyan. Kasi nasa gitna nga siya. So when are we going to use the median? Uh, we are going to use the median if the mean will not be a representative of the distribution. Uh, kailan, yan siya, kailan yan siya mangyayari? If ever you have extreme values, meaning kung nag-exam tayo, uh, merong isang tao na naka-perfect 100 talaga yung score niya, pero yung lowest one lang yung score niya. So masyadong malayo ang highest and lowest mo, and pag kukunin mo yung mean, hindi siya magiging representative kasi hihilain 
um, ng mga extreme values yung value din ng mean natin. So instead of using the mean, we are going to use the median. And most of the time, uh, ginagamit aside from yung yung happening na hindi magiging representative si mean ng ating distribution, uh, ginagamit din si median if we have an ordinal data. Remember the ordinal data, yung may ranking? Example, yung paggamit ng Likert scale na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, mas ginagamit natin si median dyan kesa sa kukuha tayo ng mean. So how do we compute for the mean? Uh, later, in Mamaya na tayo ko siya basahin. Mas gusto ko kasi siyang merong example para mas maintindihan siya. So example, you have here 15 patients were provided with their drugs in a child-proof container of a design that they had not previously experienced. Uh, a note was taken of the time it took it each patient to get the container open for the first time. So uh, I hope you are familiar with the child lock container or child proof container. Yun yung ipupush mo muna siya before mo siya i-turn para ma-open. So that is the design of a child proof container. Kasi according sa studies and sa psychology, yung bata kasi hindi niya kayang gawin yung dalawang actions at the same time. So, para hindi niya ma-open yung container. That is for their safety. Now, this one is an experiment. Uh, meron tayong 15 patients and to make yung time na ma-open nila yung container. Now, tingnan natin. Uh, nirank sila ha from 1 to 15, meaning this is arranged according to the time they opened the container. So yung rank 1, masyadong mabilis. Merong bata na after 2.2 seconds na open yan na yung container. However, uh, meron dito sa rank 15, merong bata na after 24.8 seconds niya pa na open class yung container. Kung titingnan natin, these two are very extreme extreme values, masyado silang malayo from each other. So if we look at the mean, if we compute the mean, the mean is 7.09. It, it means na hindi siya pwedeng maging representative ng ating samples or yung ating distribution. Bakit hindi siya pwedeng representative? Malayo masyado si 7 kay 24 and medyo malayo din siya kay 2.2. Okay, though mas malapit siya sa 2.2 ha, pero hindi siya pwedeng representative. So if this is the case, that's the time we have to get the median. So median yung gagamitin natin na measure of central tendency. And how are we going to, to get the median class? Ang pinakauna niyo talagang gagawin is to arrange, to arrange the scores uh, in either increasing or decreasing manner. So just like this, naka-arrange na kasi siya. Nakapasunod na siya ha, uh, increasing ito. So 2.2, 3.0 hanggang sa pinakamalaki, 24.8. You cannot get the median if hindi yan siya nakapasunod. Hindi yan naka-arrange like increasing or decreasing. So after, after niya siya na-arrange, uh, i-identify nyo na yung gitna niya. Okay? So, in a manner na pantay yung scores above it, pantay din yung scores below. So, if this is 15, let's see if where is the middle of this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, let's see if this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So wait lang ha. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. So, the median here, ang nasa gitna talaga, midpoint. Again, midpoint of the distribution. Nasa gitna, pantay. Meron kang 7 scores above. And then med meron ka ding 7 scores below. Ang nasa gitna, yun yung tinatawag class na median. 
So again, the median is the midpoint, pinakagitna sa distribution. This is the median here. So we, we actually also get the mean, pero it cannot be a representative of the sample kasi merong extreme value. So dito na lang talaga, ang gitna talaga ang kukunin natin. That's the median. Okay? I hope na intindihan yon. Any question? Any question? Ako na lang mag-question. Paano kung even numbers yan? Ito 15 kasi ito. So this is odd numbers. So madaling hanapin ang median. Kasi yung nasa gitna lang. Paano kung ang number of scores ay ano, even? I-add po ang dalawa ng median. Okay, i-add yung dalawang nasa gitna and divide it by 2. Okay? I-divide. I-divide it by 2. I wait lang ha. I don't think. I, I don't know if I have an example here. Ah, I don't have. Wait lang. Let me give you one. Okay, sige. Ito na lang. Yung scores natin kanina. Pero masyadong marami ito. Okay, this is... Uh, yung scores ito kanina sa frequency distribution table ha. Tama kasi na 30 kasi ito lahat. So, even number siya. Pero hindi kasi ito naka-arrange. So, we have to arrange this first before, before natin makuha yung median. So, I think... 3 yung pinaka-konte. Ilang 4 nga yun? You still have a copy of the frequency distribution table. Ilang 4 yun? Apat din, no? No, apat. Okay, how about the 5? 1, 2, 3, 4. Apat din na 5, no? And then, ang 6 is 5. 5 lahat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, ang 7... Six. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six, eight is pila. Four, four. four. Two, three, four. And ang nine. Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And isang ten yun, diba? Isang ten. Okay. So ayan, do not forget in getting the median, you, you really have to be patient here. Kailangan mo muna i-arrange yung scores in order. So this one increasing. So and uh, after that, hanapin natin yung median, yung gitna na scores. Pero since this is an even even number ito, dalawa ang median natin here. So ano yung magiging median here? Saan yung gitna nito? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Most likely dito siya. Kasi uh, ngayon? Check ko lang ha if tama ito. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ah! Pag i-move ko siya, mawala. <laughs> I-bold ko na nga lang. Ay, iba ko na lang ang color. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15. 1, Ilan na yun? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Sa taas, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ayan, pantay na siya. Tama. <laughs> Kindly check kung wala ba ko nalibat, class. Here, here is our ano, median. Ito silang dalawa. Okay. So, this is our median. We have 14 scores above. And we also have 14 scores 
sa baba. Okay? So, meron again tayong 14 above and 14 below. So, silang dalawa yung median. Mag magiging dalawa ang median kapag ka even yung number of scores. Pero, anong gagawin here? I-add mo silang dalawa. This time kasi pareha silang 7. So, automatic 7 pa rin. No? I-add mo sila and then i-divide mo sa 2. So, ang correct na median here is still 7. Okay? Pero pag hindi yan sila magkapareho na score, talagang mag-iiba yung median mo. Kasi i-add mo sila and then i-divide mo sila sa 2. <coughs> Any questions sa median? Wala. Master na nininiyo na naman mo yung anin sa statistics sa inyong senior high. So okay na tayo. Frequency distribution table. Mean. Ang mean ha, i-add mo lahat ng scores and then i-divide mo kung ilan yung sample size. Ang median, if add siya, hanapin mo lang yung midpoint talaga. Center of the distribution. But if it's even, ang lahat ng scores, like this 130, ito lahat, locate still the center, dalawang number yon. So you add the 2 and divide it by 2. Yun yung magiging median mo. Okay? So again, 7 plus 7 divided by 2, that is still 7. That's the median. Again, do not forget, we use the median if, number one, the mean will not be a representative of the distribution due to the presence of um, extreme values. When you say extreme values, masyadong malayo with each other. Kagaya ng scores kanina, uh, the lowest score is 2.2. And then the highest is 24 point something. So med medyo malayo sila from each other. So the mean will not become a representative. And at the same time, uh, we use the median if our type of data is ordinal. Meaning nakaranking siya. Uh, na since nakaranking siya, mas madaling gamitin si median as the center of, uh, I mean, the measure of central tendency. Okay? And then lastly, for the measure of central tendency is the mode. So, ano naman yung mode? Mode is the frequently occurring value. Okay? So, again, yung, sino yung pinakamaraming occurring na values? Actually, mas madali ito hanapin kapag ka naka-frequency distribution table tayo. Kung sino yung pinakamarami doon na score, yun yung magiging mode natin. Now, when do we use the mode if the data is nominal? So, remember, pag nominal, di ba, we don't have numerical value here. Instead, we just categorize. Just like our de demographic profile kanina, like example, male and female, we only group them. Uh, Ika-count lang natin ilan yung male, ilan yung female. And then if our variable is discrete, meaning it is measured through counting. So kagaya ng ginawa kanina, yung male, ikakount natin. Yung male, uh, female, ikakount din natin. That's the time we use the mode. So how do we compute for the mode? You just have to count the number of times each score occur and ipick natin yung may pinakamaraming nag-occur na score. So just like this one, we have eight students and then ito yung scores nila sa quiz, sa math, and then sa science. So ito yung, again, scores nila, 8, 9, 10, 9, 8, 9, 10, 9. So we can get the mean here. Ano gagawin natin sa mean? I-add mo siya lahat. I-add natin siya lahat. 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 9, plus 8, 9, 10, and 9. That's a total of 72. And ilagay pala ang total score here. 72. And then, <coughs> i-divide mo siya sa number of scores. Ilan, ilan sila lahat? 8. So, 72 divided by 8 is 9. So, kaya 9 yung mean dito class. Okay? Again, ganun ha. Any questions sa pagkuha ng mean here? Wala.
na kung wala, pag median naman, arrange muna natin siya. So, pwedeng, anong lowest score dito? 8. So, 8. 8. Okay na ito. And then, yung 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then we have dalawang 10. So, pag na-arrange mo na siya, hanapin mo na yung gitna in a manner na pantay yung nasa taas and yung nasa baba. So, most likely, ito yung nasa gitna. Silang dalawa. Even kasi ito. So, dalawa yung number dyan. Tatlo ang nasa taas, tatlo din ang nasa baba. So, again, ito yung nasa gitna. So, 9 plus 9 divided by 2 is still 2. 9. Kaya 9 yung median. Now, paano yung mode? Yung mode class is the frequent, uh, frequently occurring score. So, kung sino yung pinakamarami dyan, yan yung mode. Example, ito. Mag Inis na. Dalawang 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, apat na 9. And dalawang 10. So, this one is 2. So, sa kanilang lahat, ang pinakamarami si 9. Kaya, siya class ang mode. Kung nakita nyo, the mode here is 9. <coughs> That's how you get the mode. Any question? Any question about the mode? Kaya lang, wala ko rat. Tingog akong cellphone. Hmm, bro, not really feeling well. Okay, kaya lang. Ah, sige. Now, let's look at the signs na scores. So, tinotal na siya. Pero itotal natin siya again. 7 plus 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Six. So, this is 41 ang score sa science divided by 8 kasi 8 sila lahat. So, divided by 8, this is 5.125. Round off lang sa two decimal places. So, that becomes 5.13. Now, for the median, again, i-arrange mo muna siya in order. So, I think the lowest score here is 4. So, 1, 2, 3. Meron tayong tatlong four. Yeah, pag marami, pag marami ang mode, dalawa yung answer mo. Exa uh, when, when you say marami ang mode, example, nagpantay sila. Uh, meron kang apat na nine, pero meron ka ding apat na ten. So, dalawang mode yun. Ang answer mo, nine and ten. Uh, meron kasing bimodal, meron tayong pinatawag na bimodal na data, meaning dalawa yung mode, kasi pantay sila ng number. Meron din tayong multimodal, pwede din yun siya, kasi maraming occurring, I mean, um, yung scores class, pantay lang yung number of distribution nila, so pwede isagot mo sila lahat, like 1, 2, 3, 4, ayan. Ayan. Multimodal ang tawag dyan. Pero this time, unimodal, unimodal lang ito kasi isang mode lang talaga siya. Hindi naman pantay yung ibang scores. Okay? Ilang four nga yun? Tatlo. And then, sa five, dalawa. And then, ang six, dalawa din. And then, isang seven. Ayan. So, if na-arrange mo na siya, In order, hanapin mo na yung gitna. So, I think ang gitna nito is this one. Ayan. So, tatlo sa taas, tatlo sa baba. So, 5 plus 5 divided by 2 pa rin. This is still 5. Kaya ang mean niya ay 5. And then lastly, yung mode. Ano natin hanapin yung mode? Yung pinaka marami dyan sa distribution. So, 4. Meron kang tatlong 4, dalawang 5, dalawang 6, and isang 7. So, ang pinakamarami sa kanila, ito syempre, itong 4. Kaya ang answer dyan class for the mode is 4. So, pareha sila ni math na scores na unimodal lang. Isang mode. Okay? That's how you 
<coughs> get the measures of the central tendency, mean, median, and mode. Any question? Wala? Sure na? Okay. Wala na tayong question sa measures of central tendency kasi mag-move on na tayo sa measures of variations or we also call this measures of dispersions. So sa measures of variations class, uh, what we are actually establishing, establishing here is the precision of our data. Uh, I don't know if you have a lesson um, in some of your subjects about accuracy and precision. Ano ba difference nila? Any, any idea what is the difference between accuracy and precision? When do we use the term accuracy eh, or accurate? And when do we use the term precision or precise? Precise yung data. Kasi para, parati ko itong nakikita na ginagamit, like mag-answer kayo ng essay, pero actually, they are two different things. Hindi yan sila magkapareho. So, when do we use the terms? Any idea? While waiting, ito na dito kong tubig na kita kayo patutunan. Precise pag repeatable and accurate pag close sa true value. Okay, very good. <clears throat> pag accuracy class, uh, this one is I know how close uh closeness of data to the true value tapos pag precision naman closeness of data with each other. Okay? So, sa research kasi class, we don't do um, testing or investigation na isang beses lang. So, kaya meron tayong tinatawag na trial or replicate, di ba? Sa research, meron tayong trial 1, trial 2, or trial 3. Especially if we are like doing an experimentation. So kapag yung values na nakuha natin during the experiment is close to the true value, that is what you call accuracy or accurate yung nakuha mo na data. Now, um, if the values are close with each other, so like meron kang trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3, and the values you get for these three trials agree with each other. That's what you call precise or there is precision. So kaya pag nag-dart ka, nung naglalaro kayo ng dart, if you hit the bullseye, example, meron kang tatlong pin, and all of that na hit mo yung bullseye, it means that your data is accurate 
accurate yan siya kasi nahit mo nga yung true value and that's the bullseye. And at the same time, precise. Precise kasi they are close with each other. Lahat sila nandyan sa gitna. Okay? Pero kung naglaro ka ng dark class, tapos... Wait lang ka. Ay, ano ba ni? Okay? Naglaro ka ng dark, tapos isang pin nandito, yung isang pin nandito, yung isa nandyan, sa malayo. So ito, hindi ito accurate. Hindi siya accurate. And hindi din siya precise. So, hindi siya accurate kasi hindi mo naman natamaan yung true value. And hindi din siya precise kasi malayo sila with each other. Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag na accuracy and precision. Pero kapag ka ganito, nandito isang pin, nandito yung another pin, and then yan yung another pin niya. Ito class, hindi to accurate kasi hindi mo nga natamaan yung bullseye. Yan yung true value. Pero precise. <clears throat> okay? Pre precise siya. Kasi malapit sila with each other. Okay? Any question with the precision and the accuracy? Wala ba? Sure na. Naintindihan yan na. Ano oras na? 9.14. Ah, let's take a break. Wait, wait. Okay, let's... Okay. So, for the measures of variations or dispersions, the first statistical tool here is the range. Again, this is the range. Uh, when you say the range, it's just the difference between the largest or the highest score and the lowest score okay in in the gathered data so for an uh, for the ungrouped data automatic na yun siya the range is equal to the highest value minus the lowest value while there are actually group data pero minsan lang naman natin ito siya nakikita yung group sila together so Pag merong ganito, nag-group yung data natin, you just have to get the upper boundary of the highest class interval. So pag group natin, uh, i-group natin sila, uh, i-arrange pa rin natin from highest to lowest. So i-minus pa rin, upper boundary ng highest class interval and then minus lang ng lower boundary of the lowest class interval. Pero most of the time, ungroup data kasi tayo sa research. So, automatic lang yon. Like this one, what is the range of the following set of scores? Actually, this is the score na ginawa natin ng frequency distribution table. So, in getting the range, you just have to identify the lowest score and the highest score. So, just like here, the lowest score is 3, while the highest score is 1. So, R is equal to H minus L. This is just 10 minus 3. So, the range is 7. So, ganyan lang, automatic yung range. Hindi naman siya mahirap. Minus mo lang siya. You just have to really identify the highest score and the lowest score. And then you get the difference between the two. Any question sa range? Wala? No question sa range? Let's move on. The second statistical tool that we have for the measure of variation is the standard deviation. So among the... Uh, if the mean is the most common measure of central tendency, si standard deviation naman is the most common uh, measure of variation. So among them, it, this is actually the most important. Now, what is the use of getting the standard deviation? It will actually give us an idea whether our collected data um is precise or not. So more on the precision ito, whether the data agree with each other or not. 
So if you have um, a very large na computed standard deviation, it means that your data is far away from each other. Uh, hindi sila nag-agree, hindi sila close with each other. And um, actually, it's more on the mean. Hindi siya close doon sa mean na nakuha. So, deviated siya sa mean. So, sa research class, we don't want a very large standard deviation kasi nga hindi precise yung data mo niyan. Uh, example, nagkanda ka ng study about the effect of a certain medication sa blood sugar level of the subject. Tapos nagkaroon ka ng tatlong trial, yung nakuha mo, yung kanyang, uh, yung sa trial 1, ang blood sugar level is 80. Tapos sa trial 2, 150. Tapos sa trial 3 is 210. So, if titingnan pa lang natin, hindi pa natin na-compute yung standard deviation nila, malayo na sila with each other, hindi na sila precise. How much more if we are going to compute for the standard deviation, makukuha talaga natin dito class high value ng standard deviation. And it means my problem tayo with our data. We cannot really make a conclusion whether that certain medication is effective or not in lowering the blood sugar level of the subject. So, kapag ka ganito, I have encountered this ever since na nag uh, handle ako ng research. Marami, marami na ako na handle nito na medyo mataas yung standard deviation nila. Pinaulit talaga sila ng panel. Meaning, you really have to start from scratch. You really have to start, uh, you have to do the experiment all over again if you get a very big standard deviation. So you have to be careful with this if you are going to conduct your research na. Uh, next sem na ito, ay, yung pag, pag third year niya na ito. Okay? So what is our formula for the standard deviation? Standard deviation is equal to, this is actually like this. So, sila lahat ha nasa loob ng square root. So, square root of the summation of x um, minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. So, x here, I wait lang ha, I don't know if I have, uh, I did not leave. x here is the score and then this one is the mean. And then N is the sample size. So, syempre, SD is the standard deviation. If you see this symbol, it means summation, meaning we have to add everything. Okay? So, again, this is standard deviation is equal to the square root of the summation of X minus mean squared. You don't forget na kailangan mo yung square divided by n minus 1. So let's have an example. Compute for the standard deviation of the following set of scores. 9, 8, 7, 5, and 1. Let me just uh, again ko sana siya ng blank na slide para dito ako mag-compute para maraming space. Ano nga yun? 9, 8, 7, 5, and 1. Okay, that is... Before you can, you can proceed with the computation of the standard deviation, syempre you have to get the mean first. So the mean here, capital letter M, 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 5 plus 1. And then you have to divide this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our mean here, 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 5 plus 1 divided by 5 is 6. So this is our mean, okay? Now, after getting the mean, we can proceed sa computation of the standard deviation. So again, this is the square root of the summation. Ganito ang gawin nyo. Isa-isahin nyo talaga yan sa class. 
score. So this is 9 minus 6 and then squared plus 8 minus 6 squared plus 7 minus 6 squared plus 5 minus 6 squared plus 1 minus 6 squared divided by n minus 1, 5 minus 1. So let me rewrite the uh, formula for standard deviation. It's the square root of the summation of x minus the mean squared over n minus 1. Meaning, i-add mo daw lahat ng um, difference ng score and the uh, mean, pero i-square mo siya muna. So, wala kang negative na answer dito, ha? Wala talagang negative na answer dito. So, isa-isahin natin siya step by step. 9 minus 6 is 3. Kaya ko na siya i-square, ha? Plus 8 minus 2, that's 2 squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus 7 minus 6, that's 1 squared. Plus 5 minus 6, that's negative 1 squared. Plus 1 minus 6, negative 5 squared. Divided by 5 minus 1, that's 4. And then, uh, let's proceed. 3 squared is 9. Plus 2 squared, that's 4. This is 1. Negative 1 squared is still 1. Plus negative 5 squared is 25. Okay? Divided by 4. So let's get the sum before time and divide. 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 25 is 40 divided by 4. Dito ko lang siya i-continue ha. So 40 divided by 4 is 10. So the square root of 10. Let's get the square root of 10. Two decimal places. That's 3.16. So the standard deviation for our set of scores is 3.16. So, ganun siya kalayo sa mean. Yung mga scores natin, um, again, ganun siya kalayo sa mean. 3.16 na standard deviation. So, okay lang si standard deviation if we have, um, ano lang, konti lang na scores. Just like this one, 5 lang siya. Pero kapag nag-survey ka na sa 100 katao, <laughs> tapos ipacompute ka ng standard deviation, medyo mahirap na yun siya class if we do the manual computation. So that's the help of the software. Now, we can also use the software for this, especially if marami ka na masyadong data. Okay, this is for the manual computation. Ha? That's for the sake of everyone that don't have access sa JASP. Pero kung meron kayong JASP, then you can do this sa JASP class. Wait lang. Open ko lang siya ulit. Ha? Huh? Asa ang ibalik? Ang computation? Ala, delete na to. <laughs> Anyway, this is this one is being recorded. You can review the recorded <laughs> video after na lang. Ano yung scores natin? 9, 9, 8, 7, 5, 1. Dito ko na lang pa rin siya ikakapi. 
Like, ito naka SSD format na kasi ito. Let's delete this na lang. Para madali ko siyang ma-import ma doon sa just Okay, 98751. Now let's go to just. This is how you are going to do it. Said just. That's the same thing. Ito ka mag-click. You open the file. Uh, sa akin automatic na makikita na siya kasi recent file naman siya. So we have here. I place that one sa frequency distribution table. And as you can see, uh, you have the scores. This one is the first one. Ito yung bago, 98751. And then, let's have the descriptives. Again, sa descriptives mo kasi yan siya makikita. Now, um, kung ano yung gusto mong i-compute, yun lang ililipat mo sa variables ha. So, ito yung scores one. Let's go back to the... <coughs> ano, ano? Okay. So, ito yung scores dati. Ito yung bago ang nakalagay, scores 1. So, scores 1 lang yung ililipat ko sa variable kasi yun lang yung gusto kong kunan ng standard deviation. So, pag lipat ko dyan, automatic it will give you the descriptive statistics. Yung valid, that's the number of scores. So, lima. So, yung missing ano na lang yan. Kasi most of the time, uh, magkakompute siya ng 30 eh. So, may missing na 25 daw. But anyway, that, let's disregard that. And then, the mean is 6. Tama. We have computed that a while ago manually. The mean is 6. And then, the standard deviation. It's just that uh, three decimal places itong binigay niya. But nevertheless, it's just still 3.16 if we round it off to two decimal places. Okay. So, uh, minimum and maximum, that's the number of, tag dyan. Uh, ito, minimum is the lowest value and then maximum is the highest value. So, that's how we use the, the just. So, it will be very easy for us if we have the software. We will not do the manual computation anymore, especially if you have a lot of data na i-collect. Now, if you want to see other descriptive statistics na na-discuss natin, kagaya ng midjan again, just click here, the statistics. Yan, lalabas sila. Central tendency, we have the median. You can click the median and automatic madadagdag siya dito sa table. Just look at the table. You can see the median. And then, you will also see the mode. Okay. Okay, so nakalagay dyan, more than one mode exists, so only the first is reported. So ito yung case na tinanong kanina ni Florence na paano kung maraming mode, it will be bimodal or, or multimodal, but in this case kasi isa lang yung ire-report niya na. Okay, and then if you want to see the range also since we are done, um, we are done discussing the range, so we have here eight. For the range. Automatic, pag i-click mo yan sila lahat, lalabas na agad siya sa table. So, the range, di ba, yung minus lang natin, highest minus lowest, so 9 minus 1, kaya range is 8 here. So, that's how handy the, the JASP software is for statistics. Any question? How about question sa manual computation? Sino dito yung walang JASP? May I know? So that I will have an idea kung ilan yung magmamanual computation. Oh, okay. Sino pa? Oh, okay. Who else? Dalawa lang? Dalawa lang yung magmamanual computation? Oh, okay. Sige. So, itong mga magmamanual computation, I really need to see your solution. But I will not give you naman a lot of numbers na i-compute kayo. Huwag ba matawa ko man kung tagaan sa mag-100 ka mo and then you have to compute for the standard deviation. So, again, 
uh, ito magma-manual computations, show your solution talaga ito. Like example, during the quiz, like next week, mag-quiz na ko. Every, every meeting is a quiz day. Kay once a week lang magta mag-meet. Okay? Um, and then, yung iba na may just software dyan, video ang kailangan ko. Sa navigation, lahat. Pag-encode ng data sa account sa Microsoft, pag-save as CSV, and then pag-navigate sa just kung paano niya siya i-navigate hanggang makuha niyo yung tamang answer. Yun ang kailangan ko during the quiz. Okay? Any concern about the ano? Ha? Uh, yan, yan yung hihintayin ko sa Schoology. Kasi while the others are doing the manual computation, matagal din naman kasi mag-manual computation. So while waiting for them to finish doing the manual computation, you will be uploading your video. So at the end, pantay lang. <laughs> pantay lang yung pag-submit nyo sa akin sa time. I will not use the one with the timer na quiz kapag ka nagpapakompute ako kasi mahirap yun. Mata nakakapagod yun kasi mag-close siya. So, yung gagamitin ko is yung other format for the assessment if ganito, if mayroon akong file na ipapasubmit. Not the one with the timer. Okay? Yung kagaya sa exam na format. Yun yung gagamitin ko pag may mga ipapasubmit ako. Yeah, pwede din. You can upload the, the ano, your answers sa Google Drive and you can just send sa akin the link. Pero idiritso na ninyo ipa-access ka kasi masigit ko ang <laughs> send sa inyo ha. Ang, ano sa tawag, anak ka ng access good? Request for access? You know, doon ako ma-check. I-open lang ninyo. Okay lang. Kung mas madali sa Google Drive, no problem. Anything else? Okay, mag-practice ha sa, sa just. And that will be actually helpful sa inyo ha if you will have your research next year. Kasi alam nyo na how to process your data and medyo mabawasan na yung ano ninyo babayadan ninyo for the statistician. Mahal din ba yung statistician class? So kung kaya nyo lang naman i-process ang data ninyo, as long as alam lang din natin mag-interpret, walang problema na. That is why I shifted to software application in teaching, the, in teaching statistics. Para may ano siya, may, may kamuluhan siya, may significance siya. Hindi lang for the sake na Alam niyo what is statistics. Kailangan i-apply natin siya. Okay. So, the next one, the next statistical tool for the measure of variation is the variance. So, how do we compute for this? This is just variance is equal to standard deviation squared. So, makukuha mo lang yung variance pag alam mo na ang standard deviation. Kasi nga, isi-square mo lang siya. Gaya kanina, our computed standard deviation is 3.16. So, the variance here, 3.16 squared, automatic na siya. Two decimal places. So, this is 9.99. Two decimal places, 9.99. 99. This is your variance. So again, the variance is the average of the squared deviations from the mean. So square mo lang daw yung deviation from the mean, makukuha mo na si variance. So this is another measure of dispersion or variation. The larger you get, uh, the larger number you get here, uh, it will also mean na your data will not be precise. So, dapat maliit. Just like the standard deviation, dapat maliit din na number yung makuha natin para uh, ma-interpret natin yung collected data natin as precise. And then, another one is the coefficient of variation. 
Oo, as is na yan, two decimal places, Crystal. Two decimal places talaga ako mostly with the computation. Okay? So, again, coefficient of variation. So, eto naman. Anong number? Example, yung 3.16. That is actually considered a small one. Uh, I have encountered kasi a research that their standard deviation is 79. Meron din akong na-encounter na 50. And yun yung mga studies na pinaulit talaga sila from the start, as in from scratch. So they have to buy animals again and start doing the experiment again. Kasi ganun ka laki yung standard deviation nila. Yung 20 parang acceptable pa siya. Pero pag pumatong yan siguro na mga 40 pataas, hindi yan siya acceptable for research. Malaki na yan siya masyado na standard deviation. Kasi yung 20 last time tinanggap pa eh. Okay. So, be careful with that also, ha? Kung kayo na yung magre-research. Uh, you know how to compute the standard deviation. So, before the the defense, if nakita nyo na, oh, there is something wrong in your data, we have to correct it na before the defense. Kailangan na natin siyang i-correct before pa siya umabot sa panel. Kay ipaulit yun mo from scratch. Okay. So this one is the third one. Yeah, the fourth one, coefficient of variation. So this expresses variation relative to the magnitude of the data. So pa, ano pa rin, you still need the standard deviation here. Kasi in computing the coefficient of variation, it's just SD, standard deviation, divided by the mean times 100. And... Uh, sa interpretation naman, ganun pa rin. The larger the value, uh, uh, the more na hindi precise ang data mo. So, let's have the same example. Coefficient of variation. SD natin na na-compute kanina is 3.16, right? And then the mean na na-compute is 6 times 100. <coughs> Excuse me. So, 3. <coughs> 3.16 divided by 6 uh, times 100, two decimal places tayo, 52.67%. So this is the coefficient of variation. Most likely, mga 52% of the data is uh, deviated from the mean. Medyo malayo na siya sa mean. Okay, that is coefficient of variation. So you just have to memorize our formula ha, if we are go if you are going to do the manual computation. Wala ata ito sa software, si coefficient of variation. So you really have to solve for this also. Okay, so that's the end of the slide. Do you have questions? Hola. Sure,